there everyone it's Kathy Champion and you're back with me here in my craft room and my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. If you haven't subscribed to my channel I encourage you to please go over and hit that subscribe button ring the bell and you can choose how you want to receive your notifications that way you'll never miss out when I put up a new video. Again I want to thank you for tuning in. I am an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm located here in the beautiful state of North Carolina but I can take care of you via my website with all your stamping up needs. So if you're not currently working with a demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. So uh, the link to my store will be located in the video below. And you can also join my Facebook group, Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. That's where I, I put everything that's uh, stamping up. All of my videos, um, as I upload them, they will be posted there as well. So um, tune in and um, I hope that you will join us over there on Facebook as well well. Okay, today's card, uh, We, like I said, we're in full Christmas mode. I thought this card turned out lovely, and I didn't use any designer series paper except a small piece in that very soft, um, subtle green in the background. That is a little piece of designer series paper, and that was taken from the Painted Christmas um, DSP. Everything else I made myself. This is white that I stamped with a little snowflake stamp. This was a white piece that I stamped with uh, Words of Cheer, and I die cut that, and I did a little extra to it. I colored it with my uh, alcohol markers and then I went back with Wink Stella and gave it a little shimmer and then I even went back with my uh, crystal effects and did all of the little holly, bear holly berries so they set up. I accented it with a sequin in the middle, just a gold sequin. I heat and boss Merry Christmas on a little banner and I popped everything up on dimensionals and then on the inside we have a little pop-up with a gift card holder and how stinking cute is that so here this will lay flat and I have a little to and from circle here and I also carried through that um, this stamped image that I did the, on the basic white with the red uh, snowflakes and I thought that turned out really really cute. I did a warm uh, warm wishes for happy Christmas. I did a little sleigh with the presents on it and that comes from Be Jolly. The Be Jolly stamp set. I also used the to and from there and, and also the little Christmas bird sitting up on top of those presents and I just colored those with alcohol markers and like I said this will fit any traditional size and I covered up my information this is an old um, credit card that I have that I use as a um, just when I need to put something in uh, I measure it for a gift holder so I'm going to show y'all how to make this entire card from scratch from the in from the outside in and I think it's going to be fun. Let me show you the stamp sets that I did use. The Be Jolly for this and this and this. Um, the Words of Cheer for my spray on the front. Um, Peaceful Deer for the Merry Christmas and Best Year Yet for Warm Wishes for a Happy Christmas and Snowman Season for my snowflakes. So yes, that was a lot of stamp sets, but I had so much fun doing this. I also used um, my scallop contour dies, my tasteful label dies, and we used, as far as paper goes, I used the painted Christmas, and I used the back side of this really pretty piece. And this was so subtle, I thought it was just the perfect complement. We use some real red cardstock and we use basic white. So let's get busy. I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces and we'll meet right back up here and I'll show you exactly all the dimensions. I have a piece of a real red cardstock and this is eight and a half by 11 and I'm going to put it into the trimmer at on the 11 inch side and I'm going to take it over to five and a half and make sure everything is pushed up tight to that top lip and with my score blade and I'm going to slice up. This will give us our card base. So our card base and then I'm going to turn it to the eight and a half inch side and I'm going to bring my score blade and my um, down and I'm going to bring it over to four and one fourth which is half of eight and a half 
and I'm gonna score and then I'm gonna take it out and turn it over so that that raised edge is facing up bringing it over to the edge of my uh, trimmer I am gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna fold that down and I like to fold the entire card and just kind of iron everything out like that that helps everything lay nice and flat all right I have a piece of uh, basic white cardstock and I'm gonna line this up into my trimmer and we're gonna cut this off at a half an inch because I want this to be eight inches not eight and a half so there's my eight inch piece and now we need a piece that's going to go across here and this piece measures five and a quarter by eight so put turn it and put it in at five and one fourth This is going to give us our piece for the inside of our card. So I'm, this is eight by four, so I, I mean eight by five and a quarter. So I know that I want to score that at four. That's going to give me my halfway place in this card. So I'm going to come up and score that at four. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm turning it over, bringing it over to my lip, folding it down just like that and give it a good crease. Bring your bone folder over. This card is crucial that you really burnish everything down. And the reason for that, you have some bulk in this card because it is a um, pop-up card. Anytime you have pop-up cards like that, you're going to have some bulk. But it is a great way to display a gift card. Or at least I think I love the design of this. So... Um, I took someone else's pop-up design and just kind of altered it into a gift card. And I love doing that. I love to kind of r run with an idea. So now this piece is, we're going to do some little fancy footwork on this. We are going to score again at one inch on that folded line. So just bring that line in and score that down just like that. And now we're going to turn it and we're going to bring it to an inch right here. And what we want to do is bring our cut blade up, line it up on that one inch side. So line it up directly with the one inch and press it in and cut up. Now we're going to turn it and do the same thing on this side. We're going to line it up to the one inch come down to that one inch mark press it in and cut up this is going to give us that piece that's going to pop up on the inside and you're just going to score that just like that score these pieces so that everything folds nice and tight and you're probably going to want to score these two because they're going to need to bend. Everything needs to, um, to bend in order for this to work. So once you get that done, you're going to pop that piece out. These pieces are going to go back like that. And then this is what it should look like once you get everything folded nice and flat. So let me move my trimmer. And this right here is going to be our mechanism that's going to go inside of our card. So you can see now there's that mechanism that's going to pop up. So when we get ready to put this in, it will go in to the center of our card just like that. See how that fits right around there? And that will work out absolutely perfect. So now we have our card base. We have our insert. Now let's work on the front of our card. The front of our, you know what, I'm sorry, I already folded that one. This one is my other piece that didn't fold yet. So this is gonna fit in here just about like that. See how nice and neat and pretty that's gonna look. So let's lay that up there. I'm gonna pull a couple of pieces of this white cardstock over 
and we are going to pull the stamp sets that we need. And the first thing I want to do is that spray of flowers. This is going to be the most time consuming piece because we got some coloring and a little bit of uh, fancy footwork to do. So I'm going to pick this up on my large stamp block and this is my E block. Yeah, this is the E block. I am going to grab my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. The reason I'm choosing this ink is because I want to use alcohol markers and this ink will allow me to do that because it's not a pigment ink, it's a dye ink. So it dyes the paper rather than sitting up on the paper and once it dries it's really a good ink to use. So let me get this stamped and I'll be right back. All right, I got this stamp so this is ready for us to color now and we are going to pull in some colors and I'm going to go with my two real reds light and dark and I think it was just jade yeah so I'm going to use just jade and real red and I also want to we're also going to pull in our shimmery crystal effects this is so pretty and I don't know if you can see um, on here, but these berries, I, I put that on top after I use the, um, you really can't see them, but they are raised up. And maybe right there you can see it. They're raised up just a little bit. So it gives a little bit more dimension to your card when you use that crystal effect. And I love that. So we're probably going to use that as well. This is a stamping up product that you don't see many of the demonstrators use. You have to let your ink dry completely before you put this on or it will cause the ink to bleed. So that's just something you have to kind of keep in mind. The other thing that I did is I went ahead and taped down from my... Um, contour scallop dies or the scallop contour dies uh, I did the larger it's the second from the largest uh, on my um, painted Christmas designer series paper and again I'm using this beautiful little very subtle um, holly leaf paper and I love that soft green on this card. I think it just adds a little something elegant to it. So for this I just measure my paper to be a little bit wider than what I need it to be and sometimes I'll even cut this off but for the sake of the video I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bring this over. I do want to bring my machine over because I show you all this real often but I, I don't think you can stress this too much. Um, one way to keep stress off of our machine is when we feed um, something through. I'm going to take my top plate off. This is my cut plate. So I have my number one plate, a number two die, uh, your die adapter plate, and then my number three bottom cut plate. I have my piece of paper, and I'm going to put it in this way. And if you notice, I'm, I'm doing it at an angle, and that's what I wanted to show you. If I put this straight in, it's going to hit that edge, and it's going to be very hard to roll it through. It's going to cause your plates to crack. It's going to cause um, your top plate to warp more. This way, it doesn't, and it just works so much smoother that way. And this is true for any square or straight edge die that you have. Listen at that. You didn't hear that terrible pop when it went through. Now you're going to hear a little bit here at the end, but not real bad. Now that's all the way through, and that is cut beautifully. So all I have to do is pull up my two little pieces of tape, and I usually keep these stuck like right about here on the sides of my... Um, areas. Now this piece is ready. Look how beautiful that cut. So I'm going to lay that over there and put that there. Now I'm going to put my plate back down. Now I don't flip this plate until it buckles here. When this starts to raise up and it's a buckle where you can push it down, then I flip this one over. But I just flipped this one recently, so it's still good. But this plate, I, I rotate it every time I cut. And that keeps this plate from warping. So I'm going to do the same thing with the real red, and that's going down one size on those um, contour scallop dies. 
and I'm going to lay this plate over top. Again, you notice how I'm angling it in, and I'm going to crank that through. And again, you don't get that horrible pop that you would get if you went straight in. So just another little trick of the trade that you might want to tuck back in the back recesses of your mind so that when you are dealing with something that has a straight edge on it, remember to just turn it just a tiny little bit so that um, you don't get that terrible popping. So let's pull this over and this over. And so now, so far, we have our front, our card base, our, ins our inside insert. We have, um, we still need to stamp this. We have our white piece that we're going to stamp with snowflakes. Then we have this piece that we're going to put over top of it. And now we have this beautiful real red piece that we are going to use on top of that. Love those dies. They're so beautiful. And that's going to go right there. I hope they keep these around. These are in the annual catalog, and I hope and pray that they will keep those around for a little bit because I really do love them. So now what we got left to do, we got a couple things left to do, but I want to go ahead and color my flower. Now, I'm not going to bore y'all to death with the entire color. I want to pick out all my colors for this and get my sequence and everything out. So I will be right back. All right, everybody, we're ready to do a little color in here, and I'm going to zoom you in so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and start with my light red. This is the light real red. Let me get it in, in view. And uh, I'm going to use the bullet tip. Um, there's two ends on these markers. One is the brush tip, which is a much wider, um, and the other one is a bullet tip. So we're going to use the bullet tip. And the reason I like to use the bullet is it allows me to get into these small areas without it bleeding out. Alcohol um, spreads much easier than water-based markers, but because they dry so quickly, they don't cause your paper to get wet and roll on you. So and they blend much better than water-based markers. Now you might ask, what is a water-based marker? Well, uh, Stampin' Up, Stampin' Right markers are water-based markers, and um, some other brands that you may be familiar with would be a Tombow marker. Uh, those are water-based markers. They don't have the smoothness um, that an alcohol marker has. Um, so I do like using these particular ones and I have to say, of all the alcohol markers that I've had an experience with working with, I really do love the uh, Stampin' Right, or the Stampin' Blends, I'm sorry, Stampin' Right is the water base. The Stampin' Blends are just what they say, they blend beautifully, um, they're just a beautiful marker to work with, and they color flawlessly. I'm not going to worry about that center where it's black because we're going to put a sequin in there. So just like that. All right, I got my um, poinsettias completely colored and I left these a little lighter than I did these. But I also want to show you that if you do go too dark in your middle, you can use this um, pen called the, um, it's a Stampin' Blend called Color Lifter. And you can actually just come in. And if you wanted that to be a little lighter, it really does what it says. It lifts the color. Sometimes I'll get a little um, more color in the middle than what I anticipated wanting. And this is a great way to lift some of that color out. And then you can always, if you lift too much, you can go back and put a little bit more in. But it does this without ruining the look of your stamped image. 
So I think it's a, just a great tool to have with your alcohol markers. And I don't know if this will work with other alcohol markers. I would, I would say that it should, but I don't know because I've never used it. I've only used it with my Stampin' Blends, so I cannot um, verify that. So, but I think most all markers do have a color lifter uh, pen with their sets, so you might want to check that out if you use it. Oh, excuse me, if you're losing, using a different brand of markers, it's just, you know, just in case. So what I want to do now is I'm going to grab that die that goes with the word of, words of cheer. Let's see. Um... And that's this one right here. It's called Christmas Cheer Dies. And that's this piece right here. And this will cut this out absolutely beautiful. And you just got to kind of wiggle it around until you get it just where it needs to be. And I think it's about like that. And the rule of thumb when you're doing die cutting, you want it to come around your image where you don't see any white but not cover your colored image. So sometimes you need to wiggle it just a little bit until you get it just about where you think it should be. And that's where I like to use my little uh, post-it flags. These work so well for me. And I use those just to hold everything down and I'm gonna run that through my dye machine. We'll bring it out, lift that plate, and I always turn my plate over as soon as I finish using it. That way it ensures that I know that it's going down where it's supposed to the next go round. And then I can just lift this out. And there's my beautiful piece cut and ready to go onto my card. Now, like I told you, on the first one that I made, I did go in and put some crystal effects on each one of the holly balls, the holly berries, but on this one I don't think I am. I think I'm just going to leave it flat because we'll have to wait for these to dry and I really want to put this card together. But like I said, each one of these little holly berries through here, I put um, the crystal effects and you can feel it with your finger. You feel that they're sitting up and it adds just a little something extra. So. It might be something that you want to do. I would suggest to try it because I love this crystal effect. It comes in this little small, it is shimmery, and it gives a really nice effect on your card. All right, so I'm going to put this die back in here so I don't misplace it. That's another good rule of thumb when you're using multiple, multiple sets is to try to keep everything together. Now that we've got that done, the next thing I want to do is I want to do some stamping. So I want to stamp those snowflakes. And if y'all remember, I used the Snowman Season and I used these little snowflakes right here. I thought they were so stinking cute. And you know what? <laughs> They're already loaded up for me. I forgot. I forgot that I have them already loaded up here on a stamp block. So all I have to do, and I'm going to keep with that red theme of the real red. I think it complements my cardstock and my little piece here that I made. Let me zoom y'all back out just a hair. Um, this little piece here, I think keeping everything in that red uh, and white kind of pattern is good. So I'm just going to start stamping. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to randomly stamp this time. So now that all of our stamping on this piece is done, we are going to continue with that same type of stamping, but now we're going to take it to the piece that we cut for the inside of our card. And all you want to do with this piece is just smooth it out completely, just like that. And you want to just start stamping. 
the same way. And we'll get this all stamped and then we'll meet right back up. All right, now that I have gotten all of my stamping done, and if you notice, I did not put any stamping on our little pop-up panel because that's gonna be covered anyway. Um, so we have now, let's go back. We have our card base. We have our insert for our card. We have our front mat, which is this piece here. Also stamped the same as that with the, with the uh, snowflakes in a real red. I have my designer series paper that's going to go here. And that was cut with the contour dies. Uh, another smaller um, piece that, of real red that was cut with the contour dies. We have our beautiful spray of poinsettia, poinsettias that were um, stamped and colored and die cut. And now I have a little piece of red that we're going to use for our sentiment. But um, let's go ahead and stamp that. And for that, it's just going to simply say Merry what Christmas. What I want to do with and this, we're going to do some heat embossing because I want, I want this to pop in a gold color. So I'm going to grab my little embossing buddy, my gold embossing powder, my Versamark ink. And let's go ahead and prep this little piece of red paper. Now, anytime that I'm heat, em heat embossing, I always use this because this is like a little anti-static um, powder tool. And if you don't have one of these, you can make one with just um, taking a little piece of material and putting some cornstarch in it and just um, do the same thing. It's pretty much the same thing, but you can pick these up off of the Amazon. Um, and it's it's there's several different kinds out there uh, you can get one that has a little brush on it um, but this is by far the most popular and I find that this works really well for me so now that I've got that um, embossing powder on there I'm going to take my, my sentiment Merry Christmas and I'm going to ink it up in my Versamark ink and this is a very sticky watermark ink and you'll see once I stamp this down Putting a little pressure on it because I want to make sure I get a good image. And you can see that it says Merry Christmas. So now that that is on there, we can grab our gold embossing powder. And I like to keep my embossing powders in these little um, take along containers with a spoon. And the other thing that I like to do. I like to take a pair of reverse tweezers and pick it up and hold it with that. That way I don't I don't take the chance of getting fingerprints on it because we have oils on our hands that get on our paper we don't even realize. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of that embossing powder over top of this and I'm going to tap it off. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to close this back up and I'm going to get my heat tool out. And y'all have seen me uh, heat emboss, unless you're new to my channel, uh, y'all have seen me heat emboss many times. And it's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, here is our uh, Stamping Up Heat Tool. I love this one because it has two settings. I'm going to go ahead and start this. It's going to be a little bit noisy, so just bear with me for a minute. And then we're going to heat set this. And I'm going to show you the, um, the magic of heat embossing. I like to let my heat tool heat up a little bit before I take it to my paper. So now we're going to take it to our paper. And once this starts to change color, you'll see it start to get shiny. It is melting that heat, uh, that embossing powder to the cardstock. And I'm going to go behind it. This helps with the warping. And I just want to make sure everything is well, well set on here. So now we have this done. And I want to trim this out just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and I want to trim it just so there's a 
teeniest, tiniest little border underneath the Merry Christmas. And I'm going to show you another trick. These little um, post-it flags that I use on my, um, my, die, my dies when I'm cutting them works great on your um, trimmer as well. You know how sometimes you've got a small piece of paper and you want to put it in place but it moves when you put your, your uh, cutting guide down on it? This right here works beautifully. It holds it in place for me. It's like having another hand under there. So I cut that little piece off and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to use that same sticky um, piece and I'm going to put this where I want it to cut and I think right about there is good. Put it down, cut it off. And now we have a beautiful little banner to go on our Christmas card. I think we could probably cut just a tiny bit more off the bottom. So I'm going to stick that back down on there. Bring it right about to there. Let's see if I'm getting it straight. There we go. I just wanted it to be the tiniest little piece um, to go on our card. Now my other one, I did a little banner cut on it and I don't think I'm going to have enough room to banner cut this one. So I guess we could banner cut it on one side. Let's try it on this side. Let's cut it to about and like that. And then I'm going to do a snip right in the middle. And then I'm just going to cut from one point, from what, that one corner into where that cut line is, just like that. And that gives us a little bit. Maybe we can, might be able to do it here. And up like that. And like that. Well, that worked out perfect after all. I love it. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of this embossing powder and stuff off of my desk. I'm going to use a little brush here to brush that off. All right, so I think we're ready now, almost ready to put our card together. One other thing I want to do with this is I want to put some of the gold and I might do this one a little bit different. Let's see what else we have besides um, the sequins that might be beautiful on there. Y'all know I love these new uh, in color uh, jewels. These are so pretty. And I think that yellow right there will be gorgeous on those. So let's try that. And then on my holly berries, I think what would be pretty on those would just be some red rhinestones and let's see what I've got I know I've got some red ones there we go we'll put those little jewels on them that'll be cute so I'm gonna go ahead and jazz these up really quick and my take your pick tool is somewhere right here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the centers of my poinsettias first so I'm gonna grab these yellow jewels and put right in the middle. So this is showing you that you know you can use what you have. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Um, and sometimes you might like what you have better than what I used. You know, you just never know. So now I'm going to take these red um, rhinestones, and I have not opened this pack. Okay, y'all know I like to open mine. I'm very untraditional. <laughs> I like to go up the side with a pair of scissors and just cut that plastic away. I just find this much easier when I'm putting, when I need to get into my gems. It's faster, it's easier for me. So then all I have to do is pull this out just a little bit and take off what I need and then put them back in. And for me that works great. 
everybody has to find out what works for them and you know what works for you may not work for me and vice versa so I say do you do what and you now do. that we've gotten all of our little gems on here look how stinking adorable that is I don't know if you're seeing how these are catching the light these are just stunning on here and you know I missed one place let me grab grab those and put one because I, I don't like to have one missing that is not attractive so we'll grab one more I thought I got them on here everywhere they needed to go but evidently that one I missed so there so pretty love it love it love it alrighty so now we are ready to start putting our card together. So the um, well, we got one more thing to do. We Sorry. will cut a piece off of here, and I know that it needs to be four inches by five and one fourth. So I'm going to go let's do five and one fourth this way, and then cut it to four inches this way. Now on this piece we need to score it in half and I've already done the math for you so you will score this at two and five eighths. So two and we're going to count over our eighths. Remember the eighths is the every other line if, you're, if your trimmer cuts in sixteenths. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So that would be 5 eighths. So I'm going to score this at 5 eighths. And what that's going to do is score it right in half. And so we're going to bend, we're going to turn it over, fold it, and find my little bin folder right here. And then we're just going to burnish this down really good. And that is going to be our pocket for our gift card. And we're going to do a little stamping on here as well. But let's go ahead and seal it up first. Um, I am going to put glue down each side as close to the edge as I can possibly get it. Um, so I'm just going to run a very thin line just down the edges like so. And the same way on here. And then just close it. And I like to just use my bone folder and really kind of iron it. Now this is kind of crucial. Um, make sure that when you place this in that your open side is out. And what I like to do is I like to go ahead and take a little circle punch and punch a little thumbnail uh, right in the middle about like this. And I just kind of eyeball it. You could measure it if you wanted to be more precise. But you know, it's all good. And punch. And now we're ready to do our stamping and get this um, together. So on the inside of my original, I did warm wishes for a happy Christmas and I did the sleigh and I did the little bird on there. Now you could do anything that you want on the inside. If you wanted to, you could just stamp a sentiment on there. Uh, you can make it as elaborate as you like or as simple as you like. So. Um, let's see, I'm trying to decide if I want to go with snowflakes or if I just want to do a sentiment. So, y'all help me out if you want to. All right, let me pull some stamps. I might just go ahead and go back and do the same thing that I did before, since I do. Ha I showed y'all those stamps, um, and there's my warm wishes for a happy Christmas. Let's do it that way, so you can see exactly how I made the the original. Let me gather everything up and get my my stamp blocks, and we'll gather right back in just a moment. 
I went through my stamps and this is the one that I used on the first card and I had this little slug here with the presents on it but in that same set which is um, Be Jolly uh, you have two Santa Clauses and you have this cute little tree um, and I thought I might do the tree and that way we would have a little something different um, y'all know I always struggle with making decisions but I'm thinking that maybe the Christmas tree would be really cute there now I did pull out my Stamparatus for this particular um, little ditty and I'll tell you why I was doing with two different colors and I really wanted to make sure I got this lined up well so I'm going to bring that right to there I'll pull my stamps off and I am going to try get that tape up out of my way my little handle I think I like the tree. I think I, I wanted something a little bit different, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to just go ahead and ink this up in, some, in Memento um, Tuxedo Black because I do want to um, color this with my markers. So I'm just going to give this a good ink, pull my stamp set down under here so it gives me some stability to ink this. And I think I want to ink that one more time. I want it to be a little more vivid than it is. And that's the good thing about the Stamparatus. You will stamp in the same place every time, as long as you don't move your paper. So I'm going to pull this one up. I really need to put it on a stamp block so I can clean it. So I'm just going to sit it over here, pick it up. And then I can clean that in just a moment. So now what I want to do is I want to bring this magnet down to here. And I want to stamp in red ink right there. I might even use that star on the Christmas tree. This one I want to do in red. I think it would be really cute with the red wording and the green Christmas tree. Just like that, I love that. Or right, I want to put that little star up on the Christmas tree. I think it'll be cute. So what I want to do is try to get the star right about like that. And again, I'm going to grab my black ink. It looks a little crooked, but you know what? We're going to go with it. And we can go ahead and pull this out now, and it's ready for us to actually um, color. So we'll color that. I'll put my stamp of radis back over here. And let's pull this over, and of course you know we're going to color it. So I'm going to pull out my shaded spruce, light and dark. And I think we need um, some red and about a pretty gold. We can't have a Christmas tree without having at least one or two blue ornaments on it. So let's do our tree first, and I'm going to do our tree. I think I'm going to start out with the dark. And I just want to outline my tree. Just like that with the dark. 
Then I'm going to come back in with the light, but I'm going to grab that bullet tip this time. And I'm being very careful to go around these ornaments ever so slightly. All right, that got our little tree colored. So now the next thing I want to do is I want a little bit of crumb cake. So I'm going to grab my dark. I'm going to grab the darker of the uh, crumb cake. And I'm just going to come in on the bottom of the tree. Just like that. And we'll come back with the lighter. And I just want to kind of do a little bit of streaking. Like that just to kind of blend those colors in all right I think now what we want to do is hit some of these ornaments so I think I'm gonna do um, maybe a blue one right here and we're gonna do this the star and the we got a couple of stars on here so I'm gonna do Definitely do the big star in this bright. And this one is Dark Mango Melody. So it is a very rich gold color, which I think is gorgeous. And then we need some red Christmas balls. So I'm going to put a red one here. Let's do a red one here. There. I'm going to go back with the dark red and I just want to blend a little bit just like that. Isn't that cute? I love the way that looks and it was a lot easier and faster than doing the sled. Over there. So. All right, now let's get our elements over here. We have our card base. The first thing we're going to do, I think, is go ahead and decorate the front of our card. And in order to do this, I'm going to start layering. So I'm going to start with this piece and I'm going to layer this right in the middle. So I am going to use, I think I'm going to use stamp and seal. No, I'm going to use glue. And there I go, changing my mind again, y'all. So I'm just going to take a light amount of glue. And then I want to eyeball center this down on top of here. And then just give it a good press. Now I want to pop this up on dimensionals and like I did on the other one, I put double dimensionals on there and if you want something that has a little bit more lift to it than what one dimensional gives you, this is the trick. And all I do is I just go around the outer edges of this and then I take my um, take your pick tool and I go ahead and start lifting all of these backers off. double check make sure I got them all off and I do then I go back and I just to make to give it just a little more height I just go back and match right over top of them another Stampin' Dimensional and this is just a great way to get it so now that we've got them all on again we're just going to go back and take all of our backers off one more time so now what I want to do is I want to bring this piece back over And I think what I want to do is I want to set this down right about there. So pretty. So now I can put glue on the back of this and center it. And the reason I wanted to put that piece on first is a lot of times when you have a piece that is um, 
overlapping like this is not fitting directly onto this piece it's hanging off sometimes you need to get that on before you put the piece down because it, it can throw the eye off just a little bit so press 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 and that is all in here and see how fast it's starting to come together and here's our Merry Christmas and I'm just going to put this straight down with glue and I want to sit this right about here and now this entire piece is ready to go down on our card front so I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to use my little swirly motion and get some glue all over the back of my, of my mat. And then very carefully sit this down, just looking and keeping your edges nice and straight. Press. Isn't that gorgeous? I just absolutely love this, and I think it, I think it's turning out just beautifully. So now to put this on the inside, I'm going to show you the easiest way ever to put this in. Let me go ahead and close up my glue. I am going to use stamp and seal to put this in, but you could use liquid glue, whatever you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece all the way down. You want to make sure it's on these um, these little flaps right here as well. So I'm going to put a piece across there, here, here, and across there. Now I'm going to sit this into my card like this. And I just took a peek to make sure that I was getting it in correctly. And I'm going to hold it right here where I don't have any sticky on it. And I am going to fold this over on top of it. Just like that. Then I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to put stamp and, stamp and seal on this part. Close that down, give it all a good press, and there you go. There is your, your card. It's ready now to put our little gift holder in. And all I'm going to do here is just put some glue down on that on this top panel. This is where our, our little gift card holder is going to, um, where it's going to sit. So I'm just going to put a generous amount of glue like that and then I'm going to sit this in just like so and once I'm pleased with it I'm going to close it and press it turn it over and press it and there is our gift holder in our card the last thing we got to do now is to make a sentiment so I have a little piece of white here and I have not a sentiment, a place for you to sign is what I wanted to say. And since this is going to be like a gift, we're going to make like almost like a little tag here that says to and from. So I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Um, this is from the Tasteful Label Dies and that's these right here. And I use the larger of the circles. So I'm going to run that the way my die cut machine. There's my die and here's my cut piece and now all we have to do is stamp to and from right there on on that. So I need another stamp block and I think I'll grab the smaller one and I'm going to do this in my black Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Got a little bit of ink onto that, but we're gonna we're gonna see if we can jazz that up and get rid of it. Let me cover up my ink pad 
so I don't make a mess. Y'all know I'm dangerous with the ink pad. I'm going to try to smudge that off using my mono sand eraser. Sometimes we can clean up a boo-boo with one of these little erasers. a little bit better and I think when you sign it that is not even going to be noticeable so we are going to adhere this right here and I'm just going to do this flat down with some glue and what a cute little gift card holder this is still don't like that so I am going to try one other thing and that is, you know, we as crafters know how to camouflage things and make them not look as um, predominant as they are. So I'm going in here and I'm looking for those little gold um, sequins that I used earlier on my first card. And I had them. Here they are. Just a little, and I, these right here are, are, they are stamping up, but I think they came in a paper pumpkin uh, kit, and I saved those things because I think it's always so great to have, um, you know, whatever you get in, in the paper pumpkin, you can always use it. So that's what I do. I like to, I like to save it, and that really did take care of that. And that looks cute. And what do you think about that little Christmas tree inside the card? I love that. And I think it is, I think it turned out beautiful. I hope that you have enjoyed um, the making of this cute little card, this gift, gift holder card. And you know, we all need gift holders. And yours doesn't have to be as elaborate as this. And I may even come in my next card and do something that's a little bit simpler that will make us a, a beautiful little holder for a gift card as well. Um, because we can't have too many uh, gift holders at this time of the year. And again, like I said, your any type of little card, this is a credit card, but gift cards are usually the same size. And all you have to do is open your little piece like that, slide your gift card in it like this. It fits perfect every time. And you can always make a gift holder pocket just by simply cutting a piece of uh, five and a quarter by four inch and score it at two and five eighths and glue it on the sides punch a little thumb hole or thumbnail print right there and you've got a gift card holder. So here is our two cards, a little different, but still both of them are stunning. At least I think they are. Um, there's elements on this one I like better than this one and there's elements on this one I like better than this one. I love these um, um, jewels on here for the, for the holly. I think they actually pr are prettier than the uh, crystal effects. Uh, the inside, totally different, even though it says the same thing. What a difference it makes just by changing up what you put on the inside versus a tree or a sled. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that this is something that you would want to do in your craft room or make some of these for um, make some of these for uh, your gift cards that you're going to put on your tree or under your tree. Such a great thing to do. So thanks once again for tuning in. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is worthy. Love you guys so much. And until we craft again, God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.